welcome to the channel. It's uh, Thursday. It's about 9.30 in the morning, and I thought I'd come up and uh, make a video this morning because it's really, really nice out. We had a little bit of rain this morning. It's kind of cooled things off. And usually by the afternoon, it gets so hot that uh, the only thing you want to do is uh, get in the air conditioning and get a good fan on you and, and relax. So I thought I'd get started early this morning. And I'm, I'm going to start uh, where I left off in the last video, but across the street, the beautiful temple over here. And I thought I'd start here and then I'll walk across the street and uh, and show you around the moat and continue until I've, I've made the complete circle. But uh, this is where we're at. And I'm gonna show you the sticker here, QR, QR code, so you can get all the information on this place. I think that will work. I don't know. Nobody's ever told me it works, but I try to do it when I see them. This is really, really a pretty temple. And you get here in the morning and there's nobody here. Just a really nice day today. Um, it's it's not, not real hot and the sun hasn't come out. And it's just a great day for walking. I love to come to this place. So peaceful. It's not too much Chiang Mai news really to tell you. Things are pretty much the same. Nothing has really changed that much. Uh, about the same amount of people. Um, you know, not not a lot of tourists here, but you know enough to keep things going. Really pretty. Today I'm going to tell you a story about. A first-class, 100% gold digger, <laughs> and uh, it's kind of an interesting story. And, and I really didn't didn't know all of the story until I sat down with Leck, and she told me a few things that, that I, I wasn't aware of. Some of it I was aware of, but but uh, not all of it. And when she got back from uh, visiting her parents, she kind of filled me in on a little bit more of the details that I that I didn't know. And um, this goes back, well, back in 2004 when I first came here. Uh, and it's, it's kind of carried on for quite some time. But uh, when I first got here, when I first came to meet Leck, um, after the first couple of days I was here, word sp spread through the village that uh, Leck had a uh, foreigner boyfriend, and once the uh, once the word got spread around, her phone was ringing off the hook. <laughs> it was kind of funny, and uh, some of these, some of her her people that she knew, and some of her friends, you know, came came into the city, and uh, you know, we met with them. More than one. Uh, there was quite a few of them. And uh, this one particular girl, Leck wasn't really, really good friends with her, but she lived in the same village and they had gone to school together. And uh, she shows up one afternoon. She calls Leck and says, oh, I want to come meet your boyfriend. Well, Leck says, you know, okay, no problem. We really didn't have any plans. We were just kind of hanging around uh, Secumbent Road and Soy 11 waiting to uh, go to Krabi. So, you know, she came out and I, I got a, I just first time I met her, I just kind of got this bad feeling about her. It's just, it was just like a million questions. How'd you meet him? You know, uh, uh, where's he from? You know, what's he do for a job and all this stuff. And just, you know, I, it was almost like I felt like I was being interrogated. But uh, turns out this, this girl lived in the same village and, and she had, uh, she was, I think about a year older than like, she was probably in her, in about 30 at the time. And not real pleasant to look at. I mean, just, just one of those people that you'd meet and not really, uh, 
you know, you don't say, ooh, wow, you know, what a pretty girl or whatever, you know, just, and I, she had a, <coughs> excuse me. All right, I had to clear my throat there. Um, she had a complex about it, and you could tell, I mean, it was just, uh, it, was, it was just really strange, just a strange person. But anyway, she had a million questions for Leck and a zillion questions for me you know about what I was doing what my plans were and all this stuff and you know I'd just well, I'd only been there about four or five days but uh, anyway we we met with her and we she left and, and we went to Krabi and then we came back well as soon as we come back she's back on the phone to Lek again I want to meet with you guys I want to meet with you guys go out to dinner or something and you know Lek didn't you know didn't really have any objections I, I really didn't either I mean the girl gave me kind of gave me the willies a little bit but you know I'm just the new kid on the block I don't know what's going on around here and I don't want to be uh, I don't want to be unsociable so anyway she shows up and understand that she's got to take a taxi or, or a bus or, or whatever from the village which is about 35 kilometers from Bangkok anyway she shows up and we go out and walk around a little bit, get something to eat and, and talking and stuff. And uh, I didn't think that much about it. I you know, really wasn't all that concerned about it, but I just, she just gave me this, this strange feeling that uh, this wasn't somebody that, that really had good intentions and somebody I really didn't want to be around that much. Uh, you know, I kind of stressed that to Leck, and Leck kind of, you know, said, yeah, yeah, I know, I know, but, you know, we'll, we'll be friendly about it. So, that part of the trip was over, and uh, I was going back to, uh, to the States. You know, Leck and I had already talked about, you know, getting together and getting married and, you know, doing whatever we, we had planned to do. And... Uh, when I got to the airport, uh, Leck had to come from work, and uh, we met at the airport there, and there were three or four of her friends, and this girl was there too, you know? And <laughs> I didn't think much about it. I got on my plane and came back. And uh, after I left, Leck told me she was just cr going crazy trying to figure out how, uh, her and I met. Well, Lex went ahead and told her, you know, that we met on Match.com. And, um, you know, had started our relationship there through, through chatting and whatever. So she's trying to get Lex to set her up an account, which, you know, Lex, Lex was friendly. Lex did it and hooked her up with, a, with an online account. And, all that good stuff. Well, a couple of months went by, and I was, you know, I was trying to get like a visa to come to the United States, and we tried for a tourist visa, that didn't work, and, and then I, when we tried for the tourist visa, I already had the paperwork going for a K-1 visa, because that, you know, that was our original plans, but we thought if we could get the tourist visa, she'd get that and jump on a plane and get here real quick. But uh, that didn't work out, so we had to wait for the uh, K-1 visa to go. Well, in the meantime, this is in July. I, uh, I decide I'm coming back. So I called Leck. I said, you know, I'm going to take a couple more weeks off from work because I have plenty of time built up. I'm going to jump on a plane and come over. She goes, oh, okay, no problem. And uh, she tells her family, well, the family wants to have a wedding, which I didn't have any problem with it. We, we uh, I came over like on a Thursday and then on Saturday we got, we got married in her village, which was really a trip. I mean, it was an experience for sure. I was the only person there that uh, could speak English. And this girl was there. And uh, just... Again, just a million questions. And she was already on the internet trying to find guys and, uh, you know, the, the whole nine yards. Well, anyway, we, we got married and we 
hopped on a plane and went back, back to Krabi. And then I came, we both came back, and Lek went back to work, and then I had to come back to the United States and wait on her K-1 visa to be approved before she could come to the States. And uh, I come back, and I get a call from Lek. And she goes, she goes, Tan's got a boyfriend. And th that was the girl's name, Tan. And I said, oh, oh that's great, you know, I, you know, who is he or whatever. So she tells me he's an American guy. And uh, a parent, I, it, it, Lick really doesn't know whether she met him online or whether she met him through going to the different places in, in Bangkok hunting foreigners. Because after Lick met me, that's, that was her main goal in life, was to, to meet a foreigner and get married. Now. It turns out that she was extremely jealous of Lick. And, uh, it just uh, it became very evident very quickly. Well, anyway, the guy comes over and meets her, and uh, she makes sure that uh, yeah, there's people in there praying. I'm not going to bother them. This is really beautiful. But uh, she makes sure that uh, that Lick meets him. And I think from the way Lek describes it, she, she brought him to his house, her house, when she was visiting her mother. And Lek met him, and I think they went out to eat. And, you know, Lek talked to the guy. She said, the guy was real nice. He wasn't, he wasn't, you know, the, and this is another thing that I want to bring up. But in a lot of the stories that I, that I tell, in the comment section, they say, well, you know, the problem is that the person is, is 20 years older than the, than the girl and and this wasn't the case in this situation this guy was only like 31 32 years old well that gave him my email address and my contact information and which i you know i didn't have any problem with and sure enough he you know he contacts me and uh and we you know we talked quite a bit and his his intentions he he was not going to bring anybody to the united states but he wanted to come over here and maybe live um, you know he was going to kind of feel it out and you know we came and i chatted back and forth through through uh, email and messenger and stuff and i i didn't let on that i you know i didn't think the girl was a you know a, a real winner you know it, that's that's up to him to decide and uh But uh, he, you know, he seemed to be fairly happy. And then he, uh, he decides he's gonna come back to, to uh, Thailand. And he didn't really say exactly when he was gonna come back. Well, in the meantime, Lex Visa is approved. And uh, this is in November. And I fly back over and you know, let goes for her interview and she gets her visa to the United States and bang, we're, you know, we're, we're living in the United States. And uh, I'm still in contact with the guy. He hasn't gone back to, uh, to Thailand yet, but he's planning on it and he's planning on going for six months and seeing how he likes it. And if he likes it, he's gonna stay. So, you know, I, as far as I was concerned, yeah, that's fine. Well, he makes his plans. I think we're going to cross right here with these people. Hello. Hello. See if we can get across the street here. Traffic is really, really strong. There should be a buzzer here. Yeah, you got to press this little button here. But uh, now we're going to make sure everybody stops because some will and some won't. And they won't wait till, I, till the light turns green. They'll go just as soon as I cross the street. Lights still red and they're moving already. But back to the story. Uh, 
he gets in touch with, with town and he says, I'm going to come over for six months. And, uh, and check things out, see, you know, and see how it is. And, you know, she's, she's all for it. And uh, what he wants her to do is he wants her to rent, rent an apartment where they can live. So he, he, uh, he sends her enough money to rent an apartment. I don't know exactly how much it was. He didn't tell me. And he also sent her enough money to buy a motorbike, which is probably, you know, 40 or, 40 or 50,000 baht anyway. So he sends her the money, tells her when he's coming, and you know everything's fine and dandy. He's, you know, she's going to meet him at the airport, and uh, she's rented a an apartment, and supposedly bought a motorbike and all this stuff. And you know he's just he's just in in hog heaven. And uh, I, you know, I didn't think anything about it. I thought, hey, that's you know, she's finally dug her, you know dug her chunk of gold out of the ground and uh, yeah, we'll cross over here again we went through this temple on the last video and I pretty much ended it right there at that intersection so we'll walk back through that way if you uh, haven't seen the last video and you want to see this temple just uh, go through the last video and I did a walk through here it's a really beautiful temple get across the street here without getting hit but uh, his plans were, you know, to, to fly over and live with her for a while and, and uh, see how he adjusted to, to Thailand. Uh, I don't know what the guy's job was. I never did ask him. And, and I wasn't really, um, I don't know what he did for a living. I never asked him that. And I never asked her either because I really didn't care. And I really wasn't concerned about his financial status it had to have been fairly well to be able to come to you know drop things and come to and live in Thailand for six months at his age and uh, anyway you know the plans all in place and everything's set and Leck and I are sitting at home one Sunday and uh, I check my email and I get an email from him. He said, I'm sitting at the airport in Bangkok. There's nobody here to meet me. She's not here. She won't answer her phone. I can't get through to anybody. I'm sitting here with three suitcases and, and, uh, and I don't have no idea where to go. And I thought, whoa, you know, this is crazy. So I can grab Leck real quick and I said, read this. She looks at it. You know, uh, just kind of shocking. We weren't expecting anything like this, so. Lek, uh, Lek sends her an email, and we never got a response from it, and she sent direct messages to her, and never, never got any response. And uh, I told the guy, I said, we don't, you know, we can't, I don't, I have no clue what's going on. I, I you know, we don't, She's not answering our emails or our messages or anything like that. So, as far as I know, and I kind of lost contact with him after that, um, he pretty much stayed two weeks and then turned around and went back home. And the best I can figure out from, from what I did, did talk to him about. And, you know, just basically ripped off and crushed. And we never really knew exactly why it happened. But on our next trip over to Thailand, which was about, oh, probably about six months or a year later. I'll try to get across this street too without getting hit. Um, Lex find, finds out that uh, she took the money. She didn't rent an apartment. She took off and went to Padia. And, uh, and landed in Padia. Turns out, she goes down there, she meets a guy from Germany. 
and hangs out with him for I guess a month or whatever it was ever long he was there and then she comes up to back to the village and she's pregnant and you know it just it, it, it just gets even bizarre from that the guy from Germany had no intentions of uh, having a Thai wife and you know she pretty much just got dumped by him but she ends up somehow and I don't know how she did this but, it, but she did it she was able to get a visa to go to Germany now she didn't take the kid with her she left the kid with her mother now whether she was going there to find try to find this guy or, or whatever I don't know but uh, she gets to Germany and I, I can't put the time frames on it because we, you know, we weren't really heavily involved in it. We don't, you know, we weren't keeping in touch with her. We're basically hearing from uh, other friends and, and, and things what, what was going on. But she gets to Germany and she meets this other guy. And he's probably, ah, uh, probably mid 60s maybe early 70s and has quite a bit of money um, you know she posted pictures of the house and, and all the shit that he was, excuse my language all the stuff he was buying her on Facebook and we're sitting there watching this just going crazy you know just <laughs> Tom found her, her pot of gold but uh, you know that's just I, I felt sorry for the guy back in the states that sent her the money. I mean, he he trusted he trusted her, and boy did he get burned. But uh, you know, it goes back to the saying: it really, you know, age does play a factor. But in this case, it didn't. Now, why she why she dumped him? I have no clue. We we're never able to find out. The only thing that I can figure out is that. You know, his intentions weren't to uh, take her to to uh, the United States, and you know, she wanted to she wanted to get out of the country and, and find somebody that was, you know, pretty well off. And apparently, she did. Uh, later on, she brings her kid over to Germany, and. From the best I can tell, you know, the guy took really decent care of her and, and uh, provided for her and all that good stuff. But turns out, uh, after a few years, and, and it, I'm talking probably six, seven years, she's dumping him, and uh, she's got another boyfriend. So I. I I, I don't we don't keep in contact with her so I don't know what the story is as far as that's concerned all I know is she's going guy from guy to guy and if, from the looks of things from what I'm seeing it's basically uh, trying to move up to the next level but you know that's that's pretty much the way it is but the guy from the States I have no idea whatever happened to him I never heard from him again and uh, you know, it's just, just a sad situation. But things like that happen. And again, we go into the age factor. He, he was only maybe two years older than she was. And I, like I said, I never met him. But like I said, he, you know, he's a decent looking guy and, you know, real friendly and uh, just seemed to be a nice guy. So, you know, you just never know. You never know what's going to happen in a situation. Now this place, somebody emailed me the, or yeah, emailed me the other day and wanted me to do a video in here, and I've already done one, uh, and I understand now that if you go in, you have to buy a meal and all kinds of stuff, and I'm not really into that. So uh, it's a pretty nice hotel. It's fixed up really nice in the back, and they've got a really pretty swimming pool. But apparently so many people have been coming in here videoing that uh, they won't let you in anymore.
unless you rent a room or something. Now this place has been completely redone. It's sat vacant for a long time. I mean years and years. Pingdoy Pualin Boutique Hotel. Now there's another part to it over here. Yeah. Now, I was thinking at one time this was a doctor's office, but I don't don't really know. Yeah, see, it all it went all the way down to here, but they've only taken that part of it. But uh, that's my story for today. Uh, the gold digger from the from the village, and she was just just a real vain, vain person. Um, you know, I kind of got those vibes from her the first time that we met, and just. Um, just a me, 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 you know, I, I don't go for that and I really wasn't wasn't the first type of people that I wanted to be around and and Lex not like that either and you know, that's pretty much why they weren't really good friends but uh, Whatever happened to her, I, I don't know uh, I, I don't know what the, what the situation is now and I really don't care but uh, he definitely got ghosted at the airport Without a doubt, and, I, and like I said, I have no idea how much money it was, but it was definitely at least a couple thousand dollars. Because, you know, a halfway decent motorbike here is used is like 50 or 60,000 baht. And then he had sent her money over to rent an apartment. So we're probably talking, he probably got shafted for about, uh, about $3,000. And uh, she got a free ticket to uh, Padia. Now, usually they're cleaning the moat up. I'm gonna try to get on the other side of the street and show you. They're cleaning up the moat today. They've got boats in there and all kinds of stuff, cleaning the, uh, the pads. Plus you can see a little bit better from this side. Now, usually the cops have a checkpoint right past that first street. Yeah, they're going at it, man. Dude's in the water. Yeah, they're sucking all the hyacinth out. I would not want his job, that's for sure. I hope he's taking his antibiotics this week. Man. Well, we'll walk down this way a little ways. But, um, you know, you just never know. You know, uh, you never know what, the, what, uh, what you're gonna run into. And, you know, when you're looking to meet somebody, you have no idea what their past, over here, you know, you have no idea what their past is, and there's very likely you're not going to find out. Uh, so you never really know what type of person you're dealing with. Because naturally, they're not going to tell you the truth. If it's bad. Now, if it's, if it's the truth, they'll probably tell you, but... If there's, you know, a bad side, to, if they have a bad side that that uh, that's out there, they're not going to be they're not going to be truthful about it. And tell you, too. you know, all I can tell you is, hang on to your money until you're the one that's spending it. Um, it's just so easy to get taken and think you're doing the right thing when you you're really just leaving yourself open for for a lot of problems. Now, I think we'll walk down to this next intersection and we'll stop right about there, maybe. Let's get some good food right in there. I've ate in there a couple times. It's pretty good. And over here, actually, it's down here a little bit on the right, is the uh, Ram Skin Cancer Clinic. 
and a really great doctor in there. As a matter of fact, I saw her yesterday at her clinic, and I go back every six months and get checked. And a really nice doctor. She was uh, she was trained in, in Boston. She went to Boston University. Really a nice doctor. And uh, fortunately, I don't have any problems. She had three places on my face that she she sprayed, and uh, she says it's no big deal. But I'm just going to spray them so they don't don't get any bigger than they are. And I said, make sure you wear a hat. So I said, okay. And that was the end of it. But yeah, the skin skin center is right there. And if you if you're looking for it, look for the Starbucks. They've got a Starbucks in there. And they you can see the sign when you go by and there's a seamstress over there in that little shack and it looks like they've got one on every corner because in the last video there was a man on the other side um, right up from that temple that we walked through that was also a sewing pants up just a beautiful day today is perfect now we'll probably get some rain a little later on but that's okay by that time I'll be home well I'm gonna close out this video now and and because uh, I've got to walk all the way back and I hope you enjoyed it and hope you enjoyed the story and you know not all situations are gonna be like that so you shouldn't really judge it on, on the, the stories that you're hearing, whether it's for me or anybody else, because every situation is different. You can't, uh, you can't judge everybody by the acts of a few. And, uh, you know, just use your own common sense. But uh, I'm going to head back. I appreciate you stopping and watching this video, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.